Hello guys and welcome to another video and let's drive group free fast. So in this video, I'll try to explain how. How am I doing that? Because in group free, there are a couple of cars that are very, very quick, but it all comes down to the drivetrain of the car. As you may know, there are FR cars and MR cars, which means they are mid-engined or they're front-engined. Also, you have to keep in mind that in GT7, there is only rear-wheel drive in Group 3. So keep that in mind, only rear-wheel drive. So that means even if you have a mid-engined car, it's always going to have the rear drive. And if you have a front-engined car, it's always going to get that rear engine drive. So. Just to keep the thing simple, I will really like to go through this video and, you know, you will see how am I explaining those little concepts as I'm going around the track. So first, yeah, first things first, gears. So go to supercharger and see how and when you can change the gear. So here I'm going to probably be changing around 6.7 thousand RPM, which is the perfect output. And yeah, here you can see on the left, how am I doing that? So I'm kind of always looking at the bottom right. When I'm on the street, when I'm not on the street, I try to keep it simple and try to kind of, uh, you know, kind of get the feeling of the car. But also keep in mind that some of the corners need to be kind of upshifted a little bit earlier. So I'm not going to be exiting in second gear and then just by the end of the apex, I'm going to be upshifting in third. No, I really need to prepare the car for the deceleration zone. So I really need to bring the car in zone so we can accelerate much better in that higher gear. So this car is kind of okay. It's, I'm using the M3. I'm using the BMW here. And you can see that I always, when I'm getting out of certain corners, I'm kind of going in a higher gear and then putting the throttle down. So this prevents the car from understeering that much, but it also gives me kind of a shift less to do in the later stages of the turn. So I'm kind of saving myself a little bit of time on the upshift part. So I'm saving myself a little bit like 20, 30 thousandths of a second and just the slightest bit of the acceleration. For example, here, it's not first gear, it's second gear as I'm approaching this apex, actually the exit of the apex. I wanna always kinda try to bring the car, uh, let's say, into the turn with a little bit of, uh, with a little bit of engine braking. And you can see something like that here. So fourth gear, third as I'm approaching the corner, a little bit of power in third and then downshifting into second to get the rotation of the car in second gear. But I think it will be much, much easier to kind of notice what I'm doing in here. So heavy braking, braking in the straight line, looking at the 50 meter sign and only then as I'm starting to turn in. But you want to know that I'm downshifting to second. Although on this track, I think that third gear is probably the best option. But it's always that little thing in your mind, like what if I can go through that corner a little bit quicker and I'm always up shifting at around 8.2 thousand RPM. So this is the perfect range for this WRX. And keep in mind to use the downshifts as a tool to rotate the car. So I'm reaching this corner in second gear and just as I start the turn, I'm in first gear. I'm rotating the car in first and then when I'm getting on the power, it's third gear. It's not second because the tires would spin so much in second gear and I would lose so much time on the acceleration. So I'm kind of trying to skip the gear and also get the acceleration in third gear, which is kind of giving me again more and better traction. So you're losing, I would say you're losing a little bit of time on the acceleration part, but in the later stages of the corner, you don't have that upshift and you all, I would say you also have a little bit more traction and even more confidence. So sometimes you will even get better acceleration and better rotation. Something like that happens in here. So 50% on the brakes will make you quicker because you're, the car is not understeering. So as with the 100% of the power. So if you try to build up the power a little bit, the car will try to understeer. And you might want to notice how I'm quickly getting on the power at this point. So I'm not waiting at 20, 30% to stabilize the car. I'm going flat out because if I, if I held it for like a little bit at about 20-30%, the car would understeer and I would completely lose the racing line. Something like that happens in here. So we're just smashing the power down a little bit, but I gotta be careful because I tap the curb. So I'm waiting at about 70-80% range. And then when the car settles down, when it gets on the track really, really hard, that's when I put the power down. But that doesn't happen with MR cars. With MR cars, the concept is a little bit different. You will see why, because the middle of, let's say the center of weight is kind of towards the middle. So you have to keep in mind that the rotation is gonna be better. Easy with the brakes. So you can see I'm straight up, 
and then break. And then as I try to turn in, I'm not using that much trail breaking and I'm always trying to get a little bit of power down before the actual apex to stabilize the car. You might want to notice when I'm going into those kind of heavy and in a fast turns, I'm always holding about, let's say 10 to 20% on the power, like I'm doing it here, just to stabilize the car. Because if I tap the curb right there, and if I completely let go of the throttle, the car would just try to go sideways and I couldn't even control it. Something like that also happens in here. So braking, not a lot of trail braking. And then as I'm entering the corner, I'm trying to keep it in balance. So I'm kind of trying to get like 10, 20% and you know keep the car stable and also one more thing downshifts as you're going down it's very easy to kind of overdo the downshifts so you have to be very very careful and very steady with the downshifts so sometimes even going in a higher gear can mean that you're going to get even more consistency and stability into that turn so it doesn't necessarily mean like you have to completely like go flat out every single time you have to keep it under control and build the speed like that. I mean, that's the kind of base principle that I'm always trying to apply. Like, give it a little bit of a little bit of extra, but not too much, so it doesn't spin, it doesn't slide that much. So you're always trying to pick up and build a good base. And when you build a good foundation, this is where you're trying to go and avoid the curbs. You see how much of that rotation I got from the curbs. Curbs are useful. Don't get me wrong. Curbs are very useful, but you have to know how to control the cars. So for example, if I was driving an FR car, I would be using and abusing the curbs as much as I could. But as I'm driving an MR car, the curb, if you're touching the curb, can mean that I'm getting so much rotation that I don't need. So it's kind of excessive and you're always trying to get around the corner as fast as you can but if you're getting rotation the car just doesn't have the speed and also one more thing so there is a quite a big gap in between the race pace and my qualifying pace so here on the left i was in the race i was live streaming and on the right is my qualifying pace and you also want to notice that is a fuel difference if you go in the race so the car is full of fuel in the race in the qualifying if you go to sport mode you don't have any fuel on. So the car can be as light as, as a feather. Just kidding. It, it's not really light as a feather, but at the same time, it's a little bit lighter. And you also want to try to brake later. Also, keep in mind that the braking spots can differ quite a lot in some situations. But here, it's just, as I, as I always say in, um, in my track guides, it's a reference. It's not at exactly the same point you should be breaking at. And also consider the weight, really. In this section, for example, I'm staying on the brakes a little bit longer, upshifting and just coasting a little bit more to give the, to just give the car more space to kind of rotate and make it through the corner a lot better. So I'm giving it a little bit of space, I'm trail braking a little bit more, you know, you need to stop the car because it's also, uh, when it's heavier, it's just not, uh, I mean, it's not only heavier, it has a lot more of that potential energy, and if you touch the curb in the wrong way, it can rotate oh, the car in a very, very bad way. But I think that's it for this video, I think I explained um, most of it, I didn't explain the tire wear and traction control, but I think I did that in my previous videos and I think you can just go and watch those in the same series on my channel but I'm gonna be doing this videos as we get through the updates as we get through the game so guys once again thank you very much for watching this and I'll catch you next time bye